What's happened to us is in the last 18 days, we've had a lot of trouble. Dhruv is usually here. He's had to go home because we got delayed. Uh, our cinematographer stuck in another country. He's lost his passport. The guy who's shooting me right now is Marcel, our producer from Panama. We've lost uh, cards. We've lost our batteries. We don't even have our Mercedes-Benz cars. So when our friends in Panama heard about this, they decided that that's not right, that uh, we have to leave Panama happy, which is why they brought us to the first and only drag strip in Panama. And they brought us those. They've got us an Evo 10, a 6, a Gallardo, a 4, and a 370Z. And they've said I can drive some of them. It's a lot of technique, it's, a, it's about getting everything right for that 402 meters. So that's about your gear shift, getting your launch right, getting your gear shifts in on time, everything. You can't make a mistake. My turn next. So Miguel here has been very kind, he's let me drive his Evolution 4. Uh, so we're not doing any launches, we do a rolling start and uh, save his clutch. Yeah, He's been nice, I'll be nice. <laughs> doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. Well, not only were we stronger, but richer as well. Sure, we may have been down a wallet, a passport, and some equipment, but we had gained a lifetime of experience in just a couple of weeks. The regular people of each country we went through were incredibly nice. The kindness that we saw and felt all along the way is what I will always remember. Pura Veda! in a brand new continent. We are in Australia. It's the fifth continent. There's plenty of driving across this massive continent. It's been 24 hours of travel to get here. But you know what? I'm still waiting to go because I'm dying to go and look at the cars again, to be reunited with them once again. So you've got the cars and they have been through their servicing here in Brisbane. Mechanically everything's alright. There are a few niggling issues that have been sorted out. The cars are good to go. So it's day 73 of the Great Overland Adventure and of course, as we've said, it is a new continent. So uh, here we are in Australia and uh, my partner for this trip is going to be Sirish Chandran who's joined us as well now. Hey man. Hey Sid. So, all set, Australia beckons. All set. So you know, 10 of the most poisonous snakes are in Australia. And now we have the 11th one who's come yeah. here as well. The sharks bite, uh, the spy uh, spiders are poisonous, they are scorpions. So, I, that's yeah. where the adventure jellyfish. part of it comes in. So scorpions, I don't know, but sharks and jellyfish, it's very easy to avoid. <laughs> I, I'm not planning to get into the water. I don't know if you are. I got my beach shots. All right, so Did then the producers tell you sharks, jellyfish. I'll look out for Spider scorpions and snakes. <laughs> and snakes. So Ooh. right, let's hit the road. Yeah, let's do it. So far 
driving here has been great because uh, for the first time we are on the correct side of the road. <laughs> the roads are pretty good too. We've been uh, through a mix of city roads in Brisbane and of course the highway. And uh, for the most part it's a six lane highway. So here we are on our first destination in Brisbane. And what is the most popular things about Australia? The kangaroos and the koala. And so we are going to go and cuddle a koala. Now the koalas don't like being cuddled, but they're cute and cuddly. So there are 130 koalas here and we are lucky that we get to get a little bit close to one of them right now who's uh, clutching on for dear life to uh, Karen who's joining us. Thanks for uh, spending time with us today, I appreciate that. No problem. Um, so first tell us who this is. <laughs> this is Fuchsia, this is an adult female so she is fully grown. She's not going to get any larger than what she already is here. Uh, she weighs about five and a half kilograms which is fairly average for a female koala growing up in Queensland. Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary has been here since 1927 and the inspiration behind beginning the sanctuary was because wild koalas were, their numbers were decreasing rather alarmingly, mainly due to the fact that it used to be legal to hunt koalas. People used to kill them to, to claim their skins. In this area, a man called Claude Reed saw that the numbers even locally were decreasing rather alarmingly, so he set up Lone Pine in the hope that he could pr protect some koalas and then pr um, preserve them for future generations. <laughs> oh, she's nice and awake now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Nice little wink. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is a little boy. Hello. He's only two years old. I'll be What's his name? His name's Spoon. Spoon? Yeah. <laughs> does he like to spoon? <laughs> Sometimes Hello. he does, actually. <laughs> He's like, what am I doing here? <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> I'm not ready to let go yet, so you tell me when, because it's, it's kind of nice and I can... Yeah. He has a nice warm belly. He's pretty cool, isn't he? Aww. <laughs> You're like, okay then. <laughs> just love their expression. It's just He's soft cool. and cuddly. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually like a, kind of like a toy. It is a little bit. A lot of people think it feels like a, a lamb, like a mm. woolly fur. Yeah, yeah. He's going to chew on your bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. Pleasure. Thank you, Karen. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a good day, guys. Thank you so much. So in the middle of the day is when kangaroos and a lot of the Aussie animals like to rest. So I like that style because it means that they go into this lethargic sort of lazy mode and they find a cool spot, maybe under a tree. And of course you can see a whole bunch of them are doing over here. They're all relaxing. Wow, it drooled all over me. <laughs> Wants to be a so we had a great morning, cuddled a koala, fed a kangaroo, saw the wombat, but now all that's done. Now we go and have some real fun. We go to the Queensland Speedway where we'll be taught how to drift by a professional stunt driver. Somebody who was a stunt double in Mad Max Fury 2. I don't know what you think about the movie. I didn't like it too much, but the stunts were really cool. So hopefully we can learn something out of this.
Sid. Good to meet you. Cameron. Hi, Cameron. Welcome. Sid. Hi, Suresh. Suresh, Eugene. Cameron. Cameron. Suresh. Nice to meet you. Hey, it's great to be here with you guys. Yeah, uh, and what a nice sight. So, where did this start for you, though? Basically, um, Cam and I used to work at Movie World doing the Hollywood Sun Driver show. So we've been driving together for a long time. And I used to do drift racing uh, for a nationally circuit. So um, my wife actually said, well, why don't you start up drift school? So we kind of teased the idea out a little bit and, uh, and we went for it. Of course, I have to ask you guys about Mad Max and George yeah. Miller. I mean, everybody's calling him, you know, the ultimate visionary. And that was a tough movie to do, I'm guessing. It was a lot of fun for us. Yeah. <laughs> both Cam and myself both worked on it. How many cars did you have finished on the <laughs> sets? Uh, we didn't actually finish that many, did we? Not there really. was 140. Vehicles. Yeah, it was, I read somewhere that he used more than 100 cars. Oh, it's actually the Nux Double, so oh, okay. um, the car yeah. that has Max strapped on the front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That was predominantly my vehicle, and like Cameron said, I mean, that had a 350 supercharged motor on it, and it was brilliant. So basically what we're going to do this afternoon is we're going to start you off from basics. So we'll get you used to us and sitting in the car mm -hmm. and, and how all the different handbrakes and stuff like that work, get you used to the vehicle. From there we'll just start to progress you through the steps. And then hopefully by later on this afternoon you'll do our drift course and, and mark swimming in. Alright, let's all right, go. Let's do it. I still close. didn't get it right, but okay, somewhere. <laughs> it was good stuff. It was really good watching anyway, so you know, it sounds great and you feel great. So everything up to this point was the amateur stuff, and now you're going to show us how it's really done. As if the experience wasn't good enough, I have a souvenir as well, so I'm gonna remember this even more every time I wear this. Guys, thank you for this and of course for that. I mean, that just was an incredible, fantastic afternoon well spent. You're more than welcome. We're really enjoying it, we all Thank you. It was a pleasure thank having you here. Thank you. Have you again. Good luck on your trip. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> all right, so we best be getting back to Brisbane, I think. Yeah, we've got an early start tomorrow. Yeah, we always have an early start. <laughs> all right, bye guys. There you go.